Joint Base Lewis McCord. I'm Colonel Sky Duncan. Welcome to your JBLM Sound Summit. This is our second iteration now of this virtual town summit, and I look forward to your comments and your questions as we go through this process. It's already June. We're already almost halfway through the year, and we've, uh, I know we've lived through some interesting times in 2020, and we're now we're going through more interesting times together as a nation. I ask that uh, you follow through with us on these, some of these topics we're going to walk you through, and we're going to give you some ideas of how to look forward to the summer, look forward to the, to the opportunities that we have this summer to build better community together, together as a base, together as a community, as a military. Um, as we begin to reopen and reemerge from COVID-19, and as we look out for our broader community in the South Sound and, and maintain our partnership with all of our surrounding cities in, in Western Washington, uh, it, it's an important time for us to look out and care for our families, care for our service members. Uh, and, and we're gonna give you some options here and some great things to think about as you go through. We're gonna cover topics as broad as, as money and budgeting and, and great fun things to do in the summer and things to, things to do on base and off base, um, boss up, better opportunities for certain single service members, things like that. So let me not steal the thunder from the briefers though. I, I do wanna walk you through a couple things of how we're gonna run this, uh, run this uh, virtual uh, summit today. Um, I want to remind everybody, if you weren't able to tune in last time, we have two ways for you to submit questions. And please submit your questions. We want this to be an interactive process. So you can, if you're watching, us, uh, you're watching us on Facebook right now, so absolutely, if you have a Facebook account, just enter your, your question down there in the comments. We've got people recording those, and they'll bring the question forward during the brief, or we'll collect them and answer them at the end, depending on how, uh, how quickly that question comes in. If you don't have a Facebook account, you're still able to watch us. You're online with us. Uh, but you can submit the comment a different way. We want to make sure everybody that if you, has an opportunity to submit comments, even if you don't have a Facebook account. And that feedback form is uh, jblm.armymwr.com, and then Sound Summit is, is the link, and that has the right there. It just has a simple feedback form: name, question. It pops in here. We get it in here with less in less than 60 seconds. We've tested it, and then with somebody again, that that question works the exact same way, and we'll answer it here on the forum. 
We did get some questions last time through these processes, so thank you for using them. And we answered every single question back on the Facebook feed or back using that process in reverse order back to you. Uh, so we've answered every single question except for kind of one broader question that I'm going to get to here in just one second, which is about lighting around schools on base. Okay, so let me, let me, let me first let me tell you uh, how this process is going to work. Uh, you've already got the agenda open. The, it says JBLM Sound Summit across the top. It's a one-page document that we're going to walk you through today. And this has all the hyperlinks that you need. This is a document you can keep with you forever uh, with all the electronic links. You can bring it up on your phone, on your computer, wherever you want to do it. Uh, in order to keep the Facebook feed running and the document open, we recommend opening it on two separate browser windows because otherwise I know if you switch away from Facebook, it, it pauses the feed. So you want to be able to continue to follow through with our presenters and click on the web pages that we're walking you through separately. So in order to keep the web page that you're walking through separate from the Facebook feed, we recommend opening it in two separate browser windows. Or I know a lot of people use their, use their phones nowadays, so maybe open up the Facebook feed on your phone and, and just let it sit there and stream and open up your other, your other web pages if you want to follow along with us on the document. By the, by the way, if, if, if this is, a, again, an, an enduring document that will stay up on the web page. So if, you're, if you just want to listen to us talk and, and listen to us walk through this and click on these later, that's, what, that's why we created this one-page document, so you can have this information forever to take you to these new web pages if you haven't been to them before. Okay. Um, again, the topic for this, this uh, month is summer fun, so Pacific North, Northwest summer fun. And again, I want to reiterate as we emerge from COVID-19, one of the things we want to talk about is resiliency, family resiliency. So, so sound living is all about taking care of yourself, your family, holistically looking at your nutrition, your, your, your uh, activities, your work, uh, uh, how to balance all of those and, and, and pay attention to the things that, that we need to, to, to live a, a whole uh, life together as a family and as a community. So the... Um, Resiliency of the family and your activities, your outdoor activities, is something we're going to focus on this month. All right, I want to get now. I want to uh, click on one question that we had remaining from the last Sound Summit. So, if you click on the link in the very top left, it simply says Garrison. Little blue underlined hyperlink there. Give you a second to click on that. It's in the very top left of the one-page document. It says Garrison. It'll open up a. A, a, a website that has street lighting around schools. So we got several questions on this in the last Sound Summit, and I wanted to make sure we addressed this. Uh, we have a privatized contract here on base that runs all of our electrical and lighting for us, and they do a great job. It's city light and power. And we've asked them to go out and do an assessment around the schools in the summertime while the, while the lighting is well, while the lighting is good, in order to prepare for the fall. And so they came back and, and, and we worked with them closely, and, and in fact we found that there needs to be better lighting around a couple of our schools and our, and our child and youth centers. So bottom line, what this slide, what this uh, document shows you is that we have a plan to, it's a two-year plan to install lighting around the critical schools that have the shortages and the critical youth centers that are near those schools. So thank you very much for bringing this point up. This is the exact kind of stuff that we love hearing from the community. As you walked around and as you saw your kids walking to school and, 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 and saw a little bit of risk there of them walking in darkness in some areas, we're going to get out and we're going to uh, approach the, the schools that need it the most first this year. And then over, uh, over two years, we'll install about, 100, about 150 total new, total new lights around JBLM. So that's the bottom line information for that. So thank you again for that question. And you'll see that work going on for, again from our, that contract company City Light and Power as they install those lights around base. Okay, uh, now I'm going to be followed by Colonel Collins from 62nd Airlift Wing. All right. Thanks, Guy. Good morning. Uh, I want to piggyback on the positive uh, twist we're putting on today, again, for resiliency and focusing on the sound living aspect. So I have two great new stories for uh, Team Accord side of the house and what we're doing. First of all, uh, we have 40 deployers coming back today from their expedition airlift squadron assignment. Um, so what a great way to be resilient when family members get to reunite with their uh, folks who've been flying downrange missions and combat for quite a while. So great new story there, welcoming them back. And Colonel St. Pine herself will be doing the landing and bringing them back in this afternoon. Uh, on the second note, as we continue to open up the entire installation, especially on the Team McCord side of the house, uh, we are in well, our internal was a phase two alpha approach. What that really means is we have about 10 or 15% more personnel that are coming back to base as of this Monday. 
Um, so they've already been there working. I can tell you that safety has been our absolute most paramount concern from supplies to facilities. Everything is installed for customers as well as our airmen and other personnel that may be coming to our facilities to make sure there is no doubt whatsoever they are safe and will stay healthy as they uh, utilize those uh, services. Um, I will say too that we have starting on Monday, which Colonel Duncan will go over briefly, uh, there are several facilities will be open up base wide. Uh, there are some slight differences. We'll be sure to get that information out to you. However, be known that we are aggressively attacking to open up as many things as fast as we can. Uh, we know you and your families, your dependents are all wanting to use those. But again, our ultimate concern is to make sure you're safe when that, that, that does come. Please be patient. A lot of the facilities will not be able to max capacity when they first open. Uh, we will slowly work our way back to that normal. Uh, just again, just be patient with us as we continue to make that happen. So that's all we have for Team Accord. Uh, again, I'm glad to see some of y'all back at work and looking forward to seeing more of you very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. And uh, as Patty George comes forward to walk us through our, this, this icebreaker, this new mentee capability, I'll just reinforce one of your points. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, please continue to be patient with us as we open up all of our facilities around base. We're gonna, tip, we're gonna open up most facilities at about 50% capacity and they'll stay that way for a couple weeks. And some will still remain active duty until the, until the readiness, until we've reached a readiness capacity that says we can open those further. Like just this week, you heard us announce that we're gonna open up barbershops to all starting next week. Because we've, we've sort of, we've, we've got everybody covered on the active duty side, now we wanna open it up to everybody. We are one broader community. So thank you, over Great. to you, Patty. Thanks, Colonel Duncan. So um, I love these meetings because not only are they informative and information is powered, let us know about great things that are happening, but also it's an opportunity for all of us especially family members, uh, to dialogue and offer some great ideas about ways to make living and working uh, in and around JBLM even, an even better experience. So with that in mind, we thought that it would be fun to get to know each other so that we can be more comfortable as we dialogue. So what we want you to do is go to www.menti.com. Um, you can go to it on your phone. There's a link to it um, right below, right above number one Madigan Army Medical Center. <clears throat> and that first slide says, I would say that I am a, so, because we wanted to put the most important stuff up front. We need to know if you're a dog person or a cat person. And as soon as you go ahead and put your answer in, You'll notice that down at the bottom, in the lower right-hand corner, there's a number, and that tells us how many people have voted. I'm not sure how many people are watching right now. I was supposed to ask that. Um, what's that? 280. 280. Okay, so we, 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 I think probably all the millennials are the ones that are voting really quickly right now. Everybody else is taking a little bit longer to, to get it going. So, and so far, we are dog people here at JBLM, which is super exciting. I hear that PetSmart is coming to the PX. Is they that true? Are, they are one of the first. In, one of the hey. first in the nation. <laughs> hey, hey, folks! I'm a cat person, so come on, help me out here. <laughs> I, I'm losing big time here. My poor cat. <laughs> there we go. I saw a couple of votes popping. This Cats are cool. easier to PCS with. This for thing's sure. actually pretty cool. I think you had a number as well, Patty. Four, the 428671 was right. How, how sorry, you get that's to it. So if, if you just went to menti.com on your phone, you can put in the passcode 428671. And that is going to get you to this presentation. 428671 is that passcode. And. So, and we also like the people who are agnostic. They. Yeah, we got some purple people too. They're neither red nor blue. I like that. I love them both. Hey, while, while we're waiting on these votes to continue coming in, the, the, we maybe should have offered bears on here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but on a serious note, I, I, on a serious note, to go ahead and to go ahead and answer that question because some people I'm sure have this question about bears while we're talking about animals here. No, bears are not pets, um, and. Please, uh, I'll, I'll just reiterate Don't what we said last bears. night in the town hall. Please do stay away from the bear traps that we have set around base. We do it, we've, we've caught two bears and relocated them very humanely. 
Um, I know the bears are happy in their new location, um, but, um, but we, we are still seeing them. They, they are still around base. You're going to see coyotes. You're going to see bears. You're going to see raccoons, the wild animals that live on base. This is a beautiful, one of the last remaining prairies, northwest prairies, right here on JBLM, and a lot of these animals still live here. So please just report those sightings if you see them. We will place out more traps if we need to. There are still some traps out there, so do stay away from them, please. And we've marked off areas where we've had consistent bear sightings, and we haven't already captured them. Okay, in the interest of time, we're going to move to the next slide. I'm going to extrapolate that we, are, we, we tend towards dogs, though we love all animals here at JBLM. Okay, so, so that we can, again, have a better opportunity to dialogue with each other, let us know who you are. Okay, so it looks like we've got a lot of Army families tuned in. We're hoping that the Air Force represents, too, here. <laughs> Bri yeah. <laughs> They're doing multiple votes. Click, 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 click. Oh, and a shout out to the active duty soldiers who are tuning in. All right. We like that. Oh, there we go. We got an airman. This is pretty great. This is a good snapshot of our entire base. I, I love this. Uh, that, you know, we, I love the fact that we have some civilians tuning in, some, yes. re some retired folks. This is great. We, we're, we're staying in touch with the entire base. And hopefully everybody starts to feel comfortable with recognizing that we do really want to hear what you think um, and your great ideas. You can see Colonel Duncan when he mentioned the, when you guys brought up the lights, they did investigate that. I always say as a family member, we need to remember that you might not always hear the answer you want to hear, mm -hmm. so, but at least we'll understand the why behind things, which is always a really empowering feeling. Mm -hmm. And we do live and work here. So let's go ahead and move on. We can see that the majority of us are Army families. Oh, this is a good one. So what's a surprising silver lining for you and your family during COVID? Um, I've heard some really great, and just enter a word or words traffic yes <laughs> i don't know if anybody saw that meme about traffic recently did i talk about this last time the meme was hey if you're coming back if, if you're now if you're now coming back with us that have been mission essential the whole entire time just remember that the new speed limit on i-5 is 90 miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> which i don't condone but i thought it was pretty funny so you'll notice um, on this, the, this um, the subway tiles, the words that come up most often are bigger and bigger. So we can see that togetherness is a really big um, part of a silver lining out of COVID, which is interesting given our physical distancing, yet we really have recognized that we can come together in lots of different ways. So um, I'm sure for, for a lot of us, it's family time. And a lot of the words are the same, quality time, family time, togetherness, playing outside together, that's lovely. My dog has been the happiest that she's ever been during COVID. <laughs> okay, so really positive, great words. Lots of silver linings out of COVID. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. This is gonna help all of, um, garrison and the installation and our uh, chain of command to know better how they um, can communicate with all of us. And it makes sense that Facebook would be highest given that we're doing this on yeah. Facebook. Yep. So, yeah. um, While this is coming in, we are continuing to branch out. We, we are, uh, we've got Twitter feeds and Snapchat feeds and, the, and things like that. Of, uh, we're starting to broadcast out on as well. It's, you'll see a lot of that under the JBLM Sound Living. And so I know that's not where you get uh, 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 your really detailed information. That's for your, kind of your quick snapshots or literally your photos. But uh, I'm glad that Facebook is still usable for a lot of people. 
And that's great on these meetings, too, that these meetings are uh, a source of uh, information. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said before, information is power, so I'm, I love to have flat communication lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and move to that next slide. This is just kind of get kind of give us a gauge of how it feels to negotiate JBLM. And if these prompt any questions or ideas for you all, feel free to submit those. So, pretty good numbers. We're going for tens, but. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know that we'll, we'll ever reach 100% perfection, <laughs> but this is good. Uh, I do want to reinforce something you said, if you don't mind, really quick, though. Um, we'd love to hear your comments about, uh, to this, you know, if, if we might not ever be perfect, but we want to make sure you have the information that you need when you need it. Uh, so if we need to put it up on a website, if we need to answer your question immediately on a phone call, uh, if you can let us know um, in, in, as you ask questions or maybe just make a comment, I would like to see a better capability in X. Uh, we can, we'll, we'll look at those. Uh, we might not be able to address it right now in the, today's meeting, but we'll certainly look at those. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and move to the next slide. This is my wave your magic wand. I always like to ask this question. It's amazing the great ideas that family members and service members come up with. Um, so we'd love to hear what that is. Less work. <laughs> okay, well, finished construction on I-5. I'm sure Colonel Duncan will get right on that one. Well, yeah, I, I, we, have, we do have some good positive updates. Give me a ride yeah. around JBLM. Hmm. Yeah. It is really big. Leash is required on dogs. I think, I think they are. They, yeah, they are. And they, somebody must have seen somebody that didn't have. We, unfortunately, we do see that once in a while where people aren't, aren't, uh, aren't following the rules. But leashes are required on dogs unless you're in those open parks, those open dog parks. So we want, to, we want you to keep uh, putting in your ideas because these are great things for us to launch some initiatives off of. And so even though we, we might move on, you can, I think you, you should be able to go back, although you can put it in your comments. And in keeping with our PNW summer fun, this is my first time ever at, in, at JBLM and in the Pacific Northwest, so um, I'm gonna take notes on this. Tell us your favorite place activity or event that's Pacific Northwest. Freedom Fest, Solo Point, Rainier, Better Barracks, <laughs> the installation tour. So and we'll try and capture these and put them out mm -hmm. in the comments um, for, so you guys can access these after if there are any great. Um, I did go to um, Victoria Duncan told me about a, a park um, that has Dash, living sand dollars. Dash, Dash Point. Point. Mm -hmm. Dash Point. That was great. I went there just this past mm -hmm. couple days ago. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks so much. It was good to get to know you guys. We look forward to hearing um, how we can make JBLM uh, a great place to live and work. Thanks so much and enjoy the PNW Summer Fun. I'll be followed by Colonel Duncan from Colonel Bunt. Sorry, Colonel Bunt, the illustrious Colonel Bunt from the hospital. Thanks.
She just wanted to do that. And let's have a big aunt, roll, roll of applause for Patty George, shall we? <laughs> That's outstanding. First of all, I'm really captivated by the Menti now. Now I'm a total Menti fan. Super fun Menti fan. It took now. you two minutes, and all you're, you're yeah, and I'm all, I'm fired up. You see how the, you see how this works? This yeah. is a great venue, and go. thank you to Colonel Duncan and the rest of the teammates out here for putting this together and going through all the trouble to do it. We know it's not easy, and especially to Miss Grady because she does a lot of this work behind the scenes, and I think deserves a bit of credit. Now we're going to talk a little bit about summer safety and also men's health because that is our summer theme uh, on the healthcare front. And this is really uh, obviously aimed at uh, the male population and kind of getting after uh, health care needs during this time of year. You know, we're not technically not terribly compliant with health care regimen, uh, personal experience involved there, and we'll tell you that this is a perfect opportunity to make a relationship with your provider uh, and get those things checked out that you normally wouldn't, uh, wouldn't think much about. Uh, colorectal cancer is a big deal. Uh, testicular cancer is a big deal and uh, prostate as well, uh, highly prevalent and of course making sure that we're actually taking care of ourselves and it might not be any of those things at all, it might be just kind of a weird thing happening with ourselves and establish that relationship now. You are also benefited in this region because you have MHS Genesis uh, as part of your electronic health record uh, and thankfully do a lot of work by a lot of great people. Uh, we're able to fix the issues with that, implement it uh, in, a, in a way that made sense and as a result of it, you have a platform and you have a portal that you can get a lot of your results on and so you can check back with your doc that way if you don't have a lot of time and you don't want to come into the facility and deal with uh, parking or anything like that, uh, especially at this time uh, as we're kind of coming out of COVID uh, to our new normal operations. Let's talk a little bit about summer safety now as well on that same glide path of doing things that make sense, right? We gotta make sure that we are spending time outside, but when we do, we do so safely. Uh, swimming hazards are something to also keep in mind uh, this time of year. I know American Lake is open up, right? But it has no lifeguards, so you need to be absolutely vigilant. Do not let your kids uh, wade out in the water deeper than what they can stand in if they have not had uh, sl uh, swimming lessons. And even if they had, to be honest with you, if they're mine, I'm still gonna hover over them like a helicopter. But make sure you're doing the right things out there because we don't wanna get complacent and have an issue and a, a concern. That, uh, of fatalities or any kind of uh, injuries or what have you. For preparing field uh, food, if you will, for grills and things like that, people always tell you, you know, they want to get these deep fryer grills and all that. That's great. Just please do not drop anything in there that is frozen or that becomes kind of a, like a food explosive, if you will. Make sure you're kind of thinking about these things and you're also not uh, letting the grill be uh, accessed by young uh, ki uh, kids and such. They tend to touch those things up there, get uh, significant burns. Uh, we see all this in the emergency room. And then of course, lastly, if, when we're talking about summer fun, especially as we get into June and July, you're talking about fireworks. Most places, they're banned in, in suburban areas and city limits, but where they are utilized, uh, please make sure you, uh, you do so carefully, or even better, just attend an event where they have the fireworks there that they're provided uh, getting after that. Uh, motorcycles we, and bicycles, of course, are coming out big time in the summer. I say uh, make sure uh, if you're riding a motorcycle, you take the basic and the advanced uh, motorcycle courses. They're both excellent, specifically the advanced. You'll learn some amazing things about how to ride uh, safer and uh, make sure you arrive alive sort of thing uh, as, as you progress your way through the summer. Now, there's Madigan uh, link on the bottom there on the bottom right-hand slide that you're looking here, the Summer Safety Men's Health slide. On that link, you link to that, and any of those issues or, or questions that you might have related to healthcare operations or what's open for the men's health piece or what have you, there are over 65 videos on there. And let me tell you, those 65 videos take 130 takes to make. So we put a lot of effort in it. I can tell you that's because it requires me twice every time to kind of get the smiles right. But this is important because there's about every, su every subject under the sun on there, and it's available to you on that platform. It's also available uh, on the JBLM website as well, so it's linked to many different venues. You go to Facebook for Madigan as well, and there's tons and tons of information out there and our own town halls and, and information to share with staff uh, as well as lots of patients' information too. So I encourage you to take a look at it. We've got an incredible PAO team, and they do a lot of great work, and they do it, they do it for you. So without further ado, I'm assuming no questions are, are rolling in. If they're not, I'll be followed by Mrs. Brundage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, my name is Kristen Brundage and I'm from the Directorate of Personnel and Family Readiness. We're gonna be on the second link if you're following along. So starting in July, the Directorate of Personnel and Family Readiness is going to have a community compass newsletter that's gonna be published on this website. This is going to have all the highlighted classes and events and it's gonna direct people on how to get services through our directorate. 
it's going to have three need to know. So like the really three big things that are happening every month on our installation with Dipfer. And so let's go over some of them. So the top one that you'll see on this link is Tuesdays at two. You see what we did there? Two S days, it's Tuesdays. And that's because on every Tuesday at 2 p.m., you're gonna get to join Kim and Liliana to talk about some current employment opportunities with a special guest. Uh, they're gonna have training and career planning because we recognize that with some of the things that have happened in our community, it can be difficult getting a job. So this could be a really great segue to you finding employment within our community. The second one is Mill Spouse Money Mission. So sometimes when we have a partner who is active duty, sometimes that partner is the person who oversees the finances or we don't necessarily have the confidence to do our own financial planning or well-being. Or sometimes we want to plan for a really great vacation, especially after being cooped up in our home. So Mill Spouse Money Mission is an official DOD website that is going to help you give the skills, get the confidence to be able to do your own financial planning instead of having your financial plans plan you. The last top three for DIPFER is Telefocus. So FOCUS stands for Families Overcoming Under Stress. This is a really great program that works with active duty service members and their families and their partners, uh, and they're doing it all virtually right now. What they're doing is they see that families and people are under stress, but they also see what's working really well within your relationship, and they're gonna build with you on those skills on what is working well. So those are just some of the things that are happening with Dipfer. I am going to be followed by Kathy with sustainability. Hello, JBLM. I'm Kathy, sustainability outreach coordinator for the Directorate of Public Works Environmental Division. Here in our neck of the woods, we use groundwater for our drinking water. One of the things we wanna make you aware of this summer is smart water use on JBLM. So we want to make sure that there's a sustainable water supply going forward to, for, future and present, for present and future training needs at JBLM. So be sure and look at our website. The link is at the bottom. It has the latest for our conservation water measures and our Facebook, Sustainable JBLM Facebook, we'll be posting there. We only want rain down the drain on JBLM, so we ask that you wash your cars at a commercial car wash or at um, the MWR Autocraft shops. Irrigation right now, we're at conservation level one, so that again, irrigation is from seven to 10 and from six to 9 p.m. Take care of leaks. If your car is leaking, we don't want that running down the stormwater drain. We want you to pick up after your pet, make sure that that stuff doesn't go down the drain. Everything drains to our lakes, rivers, and the Puget Sound. So keep those stormwater drains clear. If you've got any questions, our environmental division website can answer almost every environmental question. And there's emails and phone numbers if you need anything else. Thank you. I'm gonna be followed by Lincoln Military Housing. Hi, my name is Angie. I'm gonna be link number four on your single page. Um, this summer, we're going to talk about and start some awesome um, projects on JBLM. So um, McCord, you have some great renovations uh, coming your way in our Hartwood neighborhood, which will feature upgraded quartz countertops, some new appliances, ACs, roof, siding, you're getting the works. Uh, Davis Hill and New Hillside, same renovations are coming your way as well this year. Um, this summer, we've already started our planter project in Clarkdale, so you got some new flower beds, um, some irrigation systems that are uh, maintained by our landscapers, and the same project is also coming to Madigan and Beechwood South. Um, we are converting existing carports um, into garages in the Madigan and Beechwood South neighborhood, and um, we're also going to be adding irrigation to our Merriweather Parks over on North Fort. Uh, Greenwood, currently, if you check in the back of the multiplexes, you're getting some awesome parking um, that has been added to relieve some of the um, off-road parking. So that's been great. And then fence replacements in Olympic Grove, Carter Lake, and Evergreen will happen this summer. Um, and Beachwood South, you're getting the works there too. You're getting new fencing. So we're super excited about these projects. And as we turn into uh, the, turn on the PCS season here this summer when we come back, currently we are um, with housing, I know this question has come up, with bulk pickups. Um, it is only available to our residents that are moving out and on notice to vacate. So if you are moving out and need that trash picked up, um, 
contact your district office to start that process. I will be followed by a personal property office. Thank you. Good morning, my name's Jennifer. I'm from the Joint Personal Property Office. We cover all branches of service uh, with your PCS moves. Um, first, I wanna let you guys know the main contact number for um, any transportation is 800-521-9951. Option number one will bring you to your local transportation office. Option number two will bring you to the Joint Personal Property Office. It brings you to our customer service to assist you in your questions. Uh, the first part of my slide is the Army PCS Move app. This is a new app that came out. On the slide, you'll see the link for the Apple Store. Um, I do want to point out, even though this does say the Army PCS app, it does cover all branches. What this is, is it's a central hub for all your resources. It um, creates all of your information right there. It is basically a tracking app. It is not the app to use to submit your move. This is through move.mil as well as your local transportation offices. Um, it is a great tool to use. It'll answer a lot of questions uh, that a lot of people do have under their PCS. My second point is the stop movement that is currently going on is set to end 30 June. That's per US tra uh, Travel Advisory 20-0058F. Um, right now, if you're moving prior to that, you do need an exception to policy or an ETP uh, so that we can continue your move. Uh, if your report date is later than 1 July, uh, your property can be picked up 30 days prior if you are CONUS moves, if, which is stateside. If you are OCONUS going overseas, you have up to 60 days prior that we can pick up and move your property. Um, any local moves, uh, NTSs, NTSRs, uh, which are releases, retirees, separatees, uh, they are not affected by the stop move. Your move, once it's submitted, we will process it as, we re as it is requested. Uh, if you are in training um, and have anything stating that you're in training, a student going TDY, anything like that, your move is not affected by this either and your move will be processed. Uh, currently, we are in peak season, which is May 15th through May, uh, sorry, August 15th. Um, and here's kind of what to expect during this time frame. Uh, the right now, we have unavailable dates um, because the movers are getting backlogged, especially with the stop movement. So we ask for as much notice as you could possibly give us. So we have time to get you the dates that you need. Uh, we try to make sure everybody gets what they can or what they request. Um, if dates are not available that you have requested, uh, we will try and book them. However, when we've exhausted all our means, we will contact you to request what is your timeline, what you're looking at, and how we can kind of work those dates in. We just ask that, ask that everybody is a little flexible with us on this uh, so we can get you as booked and out in a timely fashion. Um, the other thing we're asked about a lot is preferred TSPs. Uh, with these, we do try to get you the TSPs that you request. However, during peak season, these are very limited, uh, and that's also due to the availability. Uh, so we cannot always guarantee that you will get the TSP you requested. Uh, that is all I have. I do want to re reiterate one more time the phone number. Uh, it is 800-521-9959. Option one is to a local transportation office. And the number two option will bring you to Joint Personal Property Customer Service Office, which is to my office, and we handle the bookings. Uh, I will be followed by uh, the MWR. Thank you. Good morning, Kelly with MWR. I'm on line six, so if you would click on that link, that takes you to the MWR page. Before I talk about summer fun, I'd like to talk about some employment opportunities. So if you could scroll down, there we are. Uh, First off, I'd like to talk about family child care provider. If you've been one of those lucky parents who's gotten to stay home with your children for the last couple of months and you really enjoyed it, this is an opportunity for you. Uh, you can stay home and be employed to stay home with your children and other people's children and make money doing it. So if you would like to become a family child care provider, we would love to have you on our team. There is an orientation coming up on June 16th. You can earn up to $2,000 a month, plus there's a $1,000 incentive bonus. It is for military spouses who live 
in JBLM housing on base. That's the requirement. If you'd like more information, you can contact us at the phone number. It's 253-967-3039. There is no requirement to register for that orientation. You can just show up. The other employment opportunity that we've got is for child and youth program assistance. We will have a virtual hiring fair for um, child and youth services on June 16th. So that's the date to remember, June 16th, if you're looking for employment. Uh, starting pay is fourteen fourteen an hour, and uh, if you go to fb.com slash jblmcys, there's more information there. So now on to the summer fun information. Uh, these are just some options for you in the upcoming months. First off, swimming. Um, if you love cold water, here's your opportunity to go swimming in American Lake right now. Um, it's a, a little chilly out there, but if you got to get in the water, you can go ahead and do it now. Uh, Shoreline Park, NCO Beach, and Summer Cove are all open for swimming, but note there are no lifeguards on duty. The indoor pools will be opening uh, towards the end of this month tentatively. Uh, uh, that looks like June 22nd, so stay tuned for those details. Other outdoor adventure opportunities, you can rent all kinds of equipment to go outside and play. Uh, boats, trailers, campers, hiking and camping equipment, all of that is available for you. Uh, if you'd click on the rent equipment link right there on that page, it'll take you to that information. And also, our travel camps are open as well. For fishing and boating, there are some massive rainbow trout waiting for you in American Lake, so if you'd like to go fishing, make sure a, you've got your fishing license, and B, you can rent a boat to get out there far to get the big ones. Uh, we've got our, uh, the marinas open, so for bait and tackle stuff, uh, some snacks, things like that, you can go out and take the family fishing. And then finally, our golf courses are open. Both our golf courses are available for you. Uh, we have some great weather coming up in the next few weeks, and it's a, a great opportunity to go out and play in the grass and get some golfing done. I will be followed by better opportunities for single service members and Specialist Seymour. Good morning, JBLM community. My name is Specialist Seymour. I'm your guys' JBLM boss, Garrison President. I'm going to keep this short because we're going to be doing another live Facebook feed on our Facebook page tomorrow from 11 to 1. So during the month of June, the months that we or the days, the events that we have, we're having a t-shirt competition for the single service member. Uh, day which is set for August 20th. You guys can submit your like, designs or your t-shirts to jblmboss19 at gmail.com. And then every Wednesday this month, we will be playing virtual bingo again. Again, we'll play five to six games each week. Each week, you'll have a chance to win $25. And then on the 11th and 18th, we will be doing a community service event. of We'll be cleaning up the Stilic uh, Stilicom and DuPont Road over on Lewis North. And then on the 13th, we're going to have another grill out outside of the Warrior Zone patio. And then on the 17th, we're going to go Facebook Live with a nutritionist and a dietitian and a couple 92 golfs or cooks, and they're going to teach you guys how to prep healthy meals. Now we'll be followed by religious support, Colonel uh, Schaff Schaffner. Uh, good morning. I'm going to talk to you from our web page today. So uh, as you go there and we scroll down and remind you of the things we talked about last week, uh, the buttons in the middle there, the Facebook page, the YouTube page, uh, those are where we have our virtual services. So if you'd like to go out to those and, uh, and watch a service or uh, the, look at the library that we have on the YouTube page, those are still available to you. If you scroll down a little bit further, uh, you'll see the email address that we have there. If you'd like to send us any uh, comments, uh, that's the best way to do it. And as we go down a little further, there is a, the Chaplain Family Life Center. Uh, here we have a brochure for you on the page that you can click on and look at our Family Life Center. Uh, what I really want to use today is the bottom part of the page. Uh, and this has, is something we've patterned after what the commander's doing with his blue hash. This is called the purple hash. This is the chaplain version of the blue hash. It has all of the same information I just uh, shared with you at the top of the page. And then some more specific information in the middle of the page about how to get to individual services that you might want to watch uh, 
uh, over Facebook or uh, on the YouTube. Uh, as you look down at the very bottom down there, I have some things that are highlighted in yellow. Those are kind of the update section. And we'll spend the time uh, today uh, on that piece. Uh, our Family Life Center is fully reopened. So our Family Life Center is at uh, Four Chaplains Memorial Chapel, and they are taking appointments and uh, folks can walk in on a limited basis. So if you need uh, family counseling, uh, or if you're just looking for a good uh, counselor, Family Life Center is available to you. Uh, currently, unfortunately, we're not to the point yet where we can reopen the chapels. But what we are doing a lot of, and I would encourage you to talk to your unit uh, chaplains, is that because we can do uh, 50 folks, uh, we are doing a lot of outdoor services, primarily in unit areas. We have done a couple in, in the housing area, but we're doing smaller services all across the post based out of the units. So uh, if you um, are, have a unit chaplain, contact that person. Uh, we have several of them going on all across the post, uh, and the number is picking up every day. So that's a great way to get out and, and go back to a, a a time of having a service with some other folks. Um, they also have the opportunity to do 10 folks or less in Bible study groups, either in the chapel or in your unit area. And we're picking up a, a lot of folks who are taking advantage of that as well. It's not on your slide, but uh, because there was a couple of questions, I wanted to give you a quick uh, update on Vacation Bible School, since we're talking about things we do in the summer with our families. And uh, our Vacation Bible School has moved slightly to the right. We're going to be doing it the second week of August, which will be the 10th to the 14th. And we've gone from having our normal format, which would be two very large locations with 200 to 300 kids at each location, to having uh, four locations that are going to have 13 different programs so that we can make the number smaller. So these will be 13 groups of 30 kids instead of two groups of 200 to 250 kids. Uh, we'll give you more information on that as we as we roll forward, how to register and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, thank you for, uh, for the time together and look forward, uh, hopefully in the next month or so, uh, uh, to come back into the chapel uh, chapels proper. Uh, I'm going to be followed by Mr. Cruz from the commissary. Good, mo good morning, Mike Cruz from Carter Commissary to talk to you about uh, what's happening at the commissaries at Lewis Main Commissary. There will be a farmer's market from June 13th to 16th. Uh, at, also, they'll be doing a Father's Day giveaway, which will be a grill or, or that tent that's pictured right there. Uh, at McCord Commissary, there'll be, it's Purina Pet Month. There'll be a giveaway for that, so stop by to enter your name in. Also, just to let you know, there's still restrictions going on. Uh, for the commissaries, uh, face masks, uh, reusable bags are not permitted. Um, visitors are not per permitted to enter. Uh, if you need any more information, you can click on the, the commissary names on top, or you can click on, click on the hyperlinks that's on the bottom. I will be followed by the exchange, Ms. McCullough. Hi, I'm Ms. McCullough, and I'm here on behalf of the exchange facilities. And we're going to get started on our Shop My Exchange website. So on the website, as you can see, both main stores have curbside, um, both main stores have BOPIS, which is buy online, pick up in store. Lewis Main Store, you can come inside of the facility. And at McCord Main Store, they have curbside pickup. We also have on our website the deal of the day. This Special changes every day, and they have a lot of great items. The next is our summer fun specials are also on our website, updated on a daily basis. The next website that we're going to go to is our Facebook page. So our Facebook page is JBLM Lewis McCord. And on this page, we also have daily specials that we update. We have a manager special that's going to start June the 4th through June the 11th. We also, the exchange and commissary, are going to be selling each other's gift cards. And a next special that we want to highlight is the Army birthday. Celebrating 245 years of selfless service, 
Uh, the exchange is going to have a variety of products that you can enter to win on Shop My Exchange. And the other thing that we want to highlight is that your Lewis Main Store and McCord Main Store is open for regular hours. Lewis Main Store is open from 0900 to 2130, and McCord Main Store is open from 0900 to 2030. Thank you. I will be followed by Combined Federal Campaign. Good morning. Uh, my name is Julie, and I'm your uh, local Washington rep to the local federal coordinating committee that oversees the combined federal campaign. So this particular period, we have a special giving period that is open to all active duty service members, their families, military retirees, and federal civilian employees who would like to make special donations to their favorite charitable organization to help uh, the impact of the COVID virus. For example, a food bank that you might want to donate to. There are several ways that you can contribute on the slide on the link to number 11 shows you um, what the website is to go to to make this charitable donation. If you've already given to the combined federal campaign through your payroll, uh, deductions, you can also add a special uh, uh, deduction, either one-time deduction or if you want to do a continuing additional deduction to donation to a charity of your choice, you can do that. It's all listed on the slide that you see in front of you. You can choose your charity, M many charities to choose from, local charities as well as national charities. And you can give, uh, donate by a credit card or an e-check. And all that information is on the flyer. If you have any questions at all about registering at the site to try to make your donation, there's a special phone number at the bottom of the slide that you can call uh, to get help. It's called the CFC Help Center. And they're open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then, of course, there's the, the, the main website. So if you have any questions, just please go there. And thank you for your contributions. I will be followed by the Spouses Club, Melissa. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Melissa Fowler. I am the president of the Spouses Club of Lewis McCord, uh, formerly known as the Lewis Community Spouses Club. Um, on our page today, you're going to see that we have general board openings still for our board. Um, a lot of these general board positions don't require as much time as, say, our executive board positions do, um, which is really great if you are just wanting something to do to help out a little bit, get out of the house, some behind the scenes work. Um, I strongly, strongly encourage you to hop on to our, uh, our page, which is Lewis Community Spouses Club, um, org. You'll see it down at the bottom if you click on that. Hold on, let's click on that. There we go. When you get to that page, you're going to see over on your right-hand side, oh, no, I'm lying to you, left-hand side, you're going to see left-hand side, it says our board, constitution, bylaws, contact us, become a board member application. So if you click on that board member application, that'll take you to all positions we have uh, in the constitutions and bylaws is where you're going to find all of those descriptions for those specific board positions. Um, also, if you are not currently a member of our club, don't worry about it. You can still join. Uh, our link should be up, I think actually today, um, is active to join the club anytime you want. Um, one thing that I have to talk about that is not on my slides is um, we have an exciting event to announce. Uh, so we are going to be working here with our partners at Dipfer and other people on post, and we are going to be sponsoring a graduation event for all of our 2020 seniors. Um, right now, we have a tentative date for the 25th of June, um, hopefully out on Watkins Field. Um, we are going to have a volunteer meeting tentatively also on the 9th of June. So if you have any ideas you want to shoot out to us, if you um, have a senior and you have some ideas, we would love to hear from you. You can either contact me directly through our Facebook page. Uh, if you don't have Facebook, that's okay as well. You can go back to that website and you can contact us that way. Or you can always shoot me an email at uh, lewiscommunityspousesclub.com or sorry, at gmail.com. Um, we are in the process of switching everything over to our new name, so please don't get confused. Um, that's all I have today. I'm going to turn back over to Colonel Duncan.
You're welcome. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for the, the quick turn on that uh, graduation. I, I appreciate the help on that. You know, the, the graduation is another thing that we've received some requests from around base. People who wanted to do maybe a car parade or a, or a graduation, uh, some sort of mini graduation ceremony. So we asked Melissa for help and they're going to, the Spouses Club and Director of Personnel and Family Readiness are going to try and put something together for us. But we want it to be mainly volunteer led. And we, we don't want it to be, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, a big pomp and circumstance type thing. We want it to be a, a relatively uh, a fun, uh, definitely a fun event, but a relatively low key where your graduates can can be recognized. Uh, some of the schools are doing ceremonies, but we want to make sure all of our all of our military kids are recognized. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay touch on their on their website or contact Melissa. And then tentatively nine June will be the volunteer meeting. If you have ideas of how we can do that, we want to do it in a way that that is uh, that's at the right time and in, in the right fashion for your kids. Uh, I want to, before I get to the questions, I want to run through a couple uh, high points that I heard during the briefing, just to, to reiterate a couple of those. I saw a question about traffic up at the very beginning, uh, so if that's not already in my deck here, I want to hit that. We, the tra you saw the traffic resumed on the I-5 corridor. That was a ban put in place temporarily by Washington State because of COVID, and we worked with them closely and got them to turn it on a little bit earlier than, than the rest of the traffic around the state, and so there you'll, you've seen the traffic uh, the, uh, work going on on I-5. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, ideas on the mentee about things that the, to do around the PNW. We're going to capture those and put out some of those. Um, motorcycle safety courses are going on. Those classes are already full through the middle of July, but please keep, uh, please keep applying for those. We've opened up as many as we've run. We're running, I think, eight or nine of those classes a month. So keep, keep your applications in for that. We'll continue to run those during the week and on the weekends all through the summer. Um, Lincoln Military Housing is back onto their back on the backlog of all the routine work orders that they paused temporarily because of COVID. So that you'll see a lot of the Lincoln Military Housing folks running around the neighborhoods working on all those. Thank you for the help on that, boss. Thanks for the great volunteering and, and gathering all the folks together to help us around base, along with all the other great opportunities they're running. And you heard about our plans for VBS and the the exchange uh, with the buy online pickup at the curb, which is we were one of the first in the nation to get that capability. Okay, is there a, pl a question? Is there a place I can get all the slides together? So this is uh, somebody who's watching our Facebook, watching this Facebook Live and wants to get all of the slides together in one place. Um, we're no longer doing that exact structure. Uh, what we're doing though is the, all of these web links on you know one through 12 this time. We have 12 things that we just walked you through. If you click on those, that is the information that we walked through. So hopefully that uh, this format is working for you. It essentially, the, it's, it's, we're helping you navigate to where you can always get the information. In perpetuity, you know how to get to the information by clicking on these links. So this slide, this one pager, what we're calling the one pager will always be there and that will always have these links to get you to the information forever. Um, and, and essentially, so again, if you click on those links, one through 12, that is the information that we talked about. Um, I, get a, I get a comment about open the D Street gate. I also saw a lot of that pop up during the one of the, um, uh, the mentee things. People talked about traffic and opening the D Street gate. Let me go, let me go ahead and uh, address this for one second. So while I, I definitely understand each of our gates, is, is each of our uh, 13 gates are used every day by a certain portion of the population. We know down to the individual vehicle quantity uh, of, that comes through each of the gates. And while D Street was a great gate to be able to exit quickly off of Lewis North and get into Lakewood, um, it was unfortunately our least secure gate. And so during, we closed it because of low traffic flow during COVID, but we assessed during that time, something we've known for a while, that, that we need to close that gate. It is a security concern. You can, if you're one of the people that uses that gate, you know that you come on, there's a very quick guard tower, no barriers, and, and, then, and then you're on base. Um, so while I understand the convenience and while I understand that folks want to use that gate uh, to get out into Lakewood, unfortunately, we have to look at the entire base as a security perimeter to keep our families and our, and our service members safe uh, if they live and or work here. So we needed to close that gate for security reasons. Um, whole lot more to follow in the future as to if we can get money to put in what's called an access control point, which we do have at Integrity. Integrity is actually one of our best gates on JBLM. And so we've diverted the traffic around to Integrity. And so we've increased the hours, the lanes, and the throughput at Integrity to meet the need of the D Street gate closure. 
And I'm going to ask our PMO to come up and give uh, a couple more things that we're doing. So uh, while Tom Flanagan's coming up, you know, I, 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 let me just reiterate, I know that D Street gate closure uh, uh, is, uh, is, is causing a little bit of consternation for people that use that gate. But if we look at this holistically as a base, I think you'll see when Tom will walk you through a couple of things that we've done, a couple of th thought processes we went through to make it a very deliberate decision, and we've tried to mitigate as many of those, uh, f as, many, as many of those traffic incidents. Uh, 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 second order effects as we could. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. So I'm Major Flanagan. I'm the Installation Provost Marshal. And what we have done is done some traffic mitigation by putting patrols out there to monitor the traffic. And in the event that the light becomes overwhelmed, my traffic patrol, uh, traffic control point can jump out and actually direct the traffic to help facilitate that and get more traffic into the integrity gate and push that. We've also increased the hours at integrity gate to allow two access control points for longer periods of time to Lewis North. We are also working with our DPW partners because we do own the DuPont Silicon Road for jurisdictional uh, purposes. So we're able to work through that to work through the gate time or the light timing and work through to get a traffic study as we go through this and come back to normal. So those are some of our biggest traffic mitigation, yeah. sir, that we're working and we'll continue to observe and watch that. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Yeah, a few folks know that we actually have the jurisdiction over that over that road, so that allows us to mitigate some of this. We're gonna we're gonna ensure that traffic flows smoothly off of that Northgate Road where it previously came in D Street. You'll turn, you'll go up to Dupont Stillicum Road. We will control that traffic timing light better and more accurately for the throughput. You'll turn on Dupont Stillicum and go straight down to Integrity, which has a very very high throughput. Um, okay. All right, I got a uh, positive comment here. I love the new format. Thank you for everyone involved. And I want to echo, the, I want to uh, kind of foot stomp on that comment. Thank you very much to all of our uh, Director of Personnel Family Readiness, Alicia. Thanks for the leadership on this and for putting this whole thing together. And for all of our speakers, you know, the, you, whether you're comfortable or not with public speaking, getting up in front of a camera with all these lights on you sometimes can be a little bit nerve wracking. So everybody did, does an amazing job of getting up here. Uh, a virtual format's a little different than doing it in person. We very much look forward to getting back in person with you. Uh, we'll, we'll continue this same type of format, but we also look forward to getting back and seeing you face-to-face uh, -face, uh, at Nelson Rec and McCord Club. Can we get, next question, can we get captions when, uh, when I'm not on screen for the hearing impaired? That is a great question. I don't have a solution for you right now, but I'm absolutely going to keep this card and we are going to work on that. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. All right, we are right at about the one hour mark. I wanna thank you again for tuning in with us. If you have any further questions, please keep those going in the Facebook feed. We'll keep that open for a few minutes. And then that, that link again, I wanna reiterate, re, uh, reiterate that link on the MWR page that uh, is the feedback form if you don't have a Facebook account or if you, if you wanna send us anything at all. Thank you again for tuning in. You heard a lot of great things about uh, Pacific Northwest Summer Fun. Uh, how to take care of your families, how to take care of yourselves, how to work well, and lots of things to do while you're off work. Please uh, tune in next month. Same time, same station. We'll see you at 0930 uh, on Wednesday, the first Wednesday in July. Thank you very much. Have a restful June, and but please continue to take care of yourselves and your families. Thank you.